first cast. There's one. Got him. Oh, wow. There we go. Got him. Got him. Good one. There we go. This is a big fish. What's up, y'all? Welcome back. It is Weston Smith, and today we are going to be trying to complete a full mystery tackle box slam. That's right. Catching a fish on every single bait inside of this month's mystery tackle box is the name of the game. We would love to thank them for sponsoring today's video. The intro is taking place inside the truck today because 25 to 35 mile per hour winds, y'all, with gusts up to 50 miles an hour. I mean, the stuff is howling, but sometimes that can be good for the bass bite, and we got a little cloud coverage today, so I'm thinking we might be able to put this thing together. Before we hit the water, though, huge announcement. Follow me outside. I just met up with Chris from Seaborn Outfitters at the Starbucks right here, and look at what they hooked us up with, y'all. Brand new Texas Fly Company man just getting their products out, and they hooked us up with some of their brand new fly rods and reels. So I would love to hear if y'all want a fly rod and reel arsenal video now that we have almost the entire lineup as far as weight selection and uh, the different line types we've got, etc. Just do you want to see a rod and reel arsenal review of all our fly equipment? Super stoked to fish these products. We definitely got to get them spooled up and on the water stat. I would love to tell you more about it, just not in today's video. Because today is all about mystery tackle box and the casting gear. Now, I haven't even opened this box up yet, but I am quite curious to see what we have here. In this month's box, it looks like we've got a nice lipless. We've got a jig. We've got some kind of like craw-ish baits. Uh, we've got some soft plastic jerk baits. We've got some creature looking baits. We have some hooks to rig the stuff up with, and we even have a Guggen Squad jerk bait. So this thing is loaded. We don't know what they're gonna hit, if they're gonna hit today, but we're gonna try and showcase every bait in this box, catch a fish on every bait in this box. It's gonna be a challenge, because we got about three hours until there's no light left, which is not good for productivity. But what is good for productivity is a Grande Nitro Cold Brew with the pumpkin cream on top, babe. I mean, it's delicious, nutritious, and has enough caffeine to get me going for the day's festivities. So let's go ahead, get to the water, rig some things up, catch some fish. I see why I've never fished here before. It's gated and it's one of those places that's like extra gated with like the security office kind of thing right there and you gotta be like a guest of a resident to get in here. But the gate was open so I just kind of whipped in. You know how I do. These ponds look juicy y'all. They're tiered. There's like four different ponds. I've seen some catches on the Fish Brain app which has me excited. And boy, is it cranking the wind. Oh my gosh. These fountains are blowing like a hundred feet to one direction. It seems like I haven't been able to get a full mystery tackle box slam in a while too. I mean, like catching a fish on every bait in the box, it is a challenge. So that, uh, if we make it happen, we're gonna have to treat ourselves to like a Chipotle dinner or something because we hungry. All right, what do we want to throw first? I'm kind of thinking this little lipless. Or should we do the jerk bait? Oh my gosh, this is gonna be tough. I might tie them both on and just throw them both. Why am I even worried? I got rods here. But this is a Texas rig, so I'm probably gonna throw some of these plastics on it. Okay, I'm gonna leave the Texas rig lined up. Let's just toss this to the side. No need to throw the bandito bug. That'd be too easy. That ain't a challenge. I gotta try and catch them on these here. Mmm, here we go. I got a twitch rod. This is perfect for working the jerk bait. And I have a reaction rod, which is exactly what we need for the lipless crankbait. Okay, let me take about five minutes to rig this stuff up and I'll be right back. And there you have it. We have got the jerk bait. We have got the Texas rigged ring crawl. And we have the little lipless. Let's get to work, boys and girls. This looks phenomenal. Hopefully, we can give out some good tips along the way. First cast with the jerk bait. Oh, this water's looking clear, too. Oh, we got a fish. First cast. First cast. I'm on the BFS rod. I got to tighten this drag. I'm not going to say that was easy, but that wasn't hard. Oh, there's a bigger one. There's three fish on it. There's three fish. Oh, my gosh. There was three bass. There was other bass chasing this fish, trying to get the... Oh, my gosh. This is insane. I have a feeling it's about to be a phenomenal day. Wow. How crazy was that? See, buddy. Okay, look, if I can knock out the moving baits quickly while the bite is hot, I'm gonna get this lipless in there and try this one. Reaction rod, perfect slower tip for those treble hooks. Let's see if I can get a fish second cast too. Well, we are off to a record breaking start. Let me break the jerk bait back out. I wonder if I can still get a bite on that thing. A little erratic motion and that nice pause has seemed to set us up for success. Let's see if the hunch is correct. There's one, got him. Oh wow, it's a good one. It's a good one. We got us one, boys. I've got light line on this reel. I don't think I'm gonna be able to flip this one up. I'm gonna have to go down there for it. This could be a big fish, actually. This thing's taking drag on the BFS reel. Oh my gosh. Okay, this one's actually got some size, y'all. I might have to back off a little bit. What are we dealing with? This thing's digging. Oh wow, oh my gosh. There's no way. 
jerk bait secure in the dub. Come here, bud. Okay, how am I gonna do this? Gosh dang it, terrible execution. Look at that fish. Look at that fish. What on earth? No friggin' way. A solid two and a half to three pound bass on the jerk bait out of the mystery tackle box. We've been using MTB for years and you see why. I mean, that's a solid fish, y'all, and hopefully there's many more to come. Took drag right away off of the reel. That is exactly what you want. We'll see you, buddy. What a fish, dude. The jerk bait is on today. I want to catch more fish on this, but I also want to complete the slam. That's the real challenge. So let me grab that lipless again. And I'm gonna hit the yo-yo technique where I raise the rod tip and then I lower it as I bring in that slack and reel. Raise the rod tip, lower and reel. That's gonna have it swimming at you and then pausing, swimming at you and then pausing, acting more like the jerk bait. Cause it seems like they're definitely willing to chase the moving bait, but they like that pause today. You'll typically get hit as you're lowering the rod tip and reeling in that slack when the bait is paused. One way to work these is just a steady retrieve, right? So just a constant reel. But that might be a little too fast for these fish today. We're gonna dial them in and we'll figure it out. Plus we got a lot of ponds to hit. But again, if you don't want that steady retrieve, just raise the rod tip, reel in the slack on the way down. Oh, fish on. Oh no, he came off. No. Oh, he whipped out. <gasps> the bass missed. Wow, we just had a hit. Right where it goes from light to dark. As soon as you see that transition and it gets deeper, that's where that bass just hit. Two hits back to back now. Oh, fish on. That time it was just constantly reeling. I didn't give it a pause. Maybe I was wrong. Oh, wow, okay. It's starting to pull now. Okay. It felt light at first and then it feels like now it wants to go. Hold on, what do we got, little guy? Oh, it is a little guy, wow, he deceived me. That's what happened, he pulled me into some grass and then started to feel heavy. Forgive my ignorance on that one, y'all. Started to feel like a two to three pounder like that last one. He is definitely a micro. This is a nice fish, you know? But that secures another one out of the box, constant reel, heck yes. The problem is today's such a good day for a moving bite, I almost wanna just keep throwing these, but I really wanna catch fish on everything out of the box and supply some more tips. Team rig along the grass where I got that bite. Let's see what happens. They are not about the bottom today, man. They just want the bite moving. I might have to start swimming this Texas rig. That's probably how I'm gonna get a bite is just with that tail kicking as I'm swimming it and go for a fierce hook set since it's just a big single hook. Let's upsize this bottom bait a little bit. Going from that Texas rig, I'm gonna flip the jig for a minute. Look at this. Toss one of these puppies on here. But the thing is, this bait is a little bit too long for the jig. You can see it's gonna be hanging pretty low. I'm going to chop off the head there and that should fit the jig a little bit better try and size this thing up it's got a bait keeper there prevent that thing from slipping back down i'm just seeing where i'm going to need to exit the bait to get this thing lined up so it's not super scrunched or stretched on the hook always good practice so you don't waste plastics you want to make sure you get this lined up nice and neat that way once you get it rigged up She's looking perfect. Those claws are still below the skirt, so they're gonna be able to roam freely, but they're not way down here to where that bait is too long for this jig. And sometimes you might even have to trim the skirt a little bit if you've got a really short plastic. You kind of customize your jigs in that way. So this weed guard, it doesn't need to go too much past the barb. So some folks would cut it down a little bit to where it just goes past the barb so you avoid the grass but have a better hookup ratio. This is a 3 8 ounce, so pretty versatile, but this more mimics a bluegill than this Texas rig right here, which is more of a bear craw. And maybe that's what these fish are in the mood for today and why they're not hitting the Texas rig as much. The Texas rig bite has been phenomenal lately, but today they're all about the moving bait. It's this weather. I think it's just got them fired up, so they're chasing. Anyways, we're about to walk up to the fourth pond here, and I just want to showcase what I'm tying up and my thoughts on why I'm switching things up a little bit. Based on the pattern we've experienced, we could probably catch fish on the jerk bait or the lipless all day. And hopefully we can knock these baits out and do that some more. But for now, we got the challenge on our minds and we just want to catch something on everything if possible. It's proven to be tough on the Texas rig, which is not the usual. Jig and Texas rigs side by side. This looks good, real clear. Oh, it's a sandy bottom too. There's some grass for sure, but I'm gonna work this jig to start. And this was kind of my fall topwater setup. So I've got 50 pound Guggen Squad braid on here, but I do have a clear line for my leader. So I've got, um, I wanna say this is probably 15 or 20 pound fluorocarbon. I got about a four foot leader here attached with a double uni knot. A lot of times you want to fish the windblown side, meaning the side that the wind is hitting. That's going to be pushing up all the little bait fish, all these little fish. And then the bass can kind of swoosh over there in that corner pocket. A lot of times like on big lakes and whatnot, you almost always see the pros. They're heading over towards the windblown side, points with the wind blown on it. And that's where they're going to catch a lot of fish. But in these ponds, you never know where they could be. I'm just kind of covering the whole thing since we've got the opportunity. And I'm shocked I have not gotten a bite on the jig or the Texas rig yet. 
Well, I don't know what happened. This pond looks so good. But every one of these has produced worse and worse. We might have to go pond hopping, y'all. Fish on. Might have lost the jerk bait, y'all. We got stuck on the wire. I casted it and was retrieving it that way. But it doesn't want to come undone, so it's definitely lost. Like, this thing's a goner. Well, that's not good. No more hard plastic jerk bait, but that means soft plastic jerk bait. <laughs> Ideally, I was going to rig this up on the go-to rod because I am going to need to set the hook pretty hard with this single hook. And also, this BFS reel has some light drag on it. I can crank it up, but this is light line. This isn't necessarily the ideal setup. I would say anywhere 10 to 15 pound fluorocarbon is good for this. But essentially, all I've done is weightless Texas rigged this uh, little bait fish imitation. So we've got these four inch jerk minnow juniors and uh, I tossed it on one of the hooks straight out of the box. So we've got another one in case we lose this, just like we lost that last one. We got plenty of these in case we're burning through them, but I think this could do it. The advantage of using this lighter setup is I'll get a good fling and I'll actually be able to cast it because this is extremely light, but this BFS reel is made for casting the lightest of baits. So this could be good. Not good. Bird's nest with light line is never fun. Definitely gonna tighten up the settings. I forget it's super windy today. <laughs> Oh, I saw him eat it. Oh my gosh, we just missed him. That was so cool. That bass came right up to the surface to eat this thing. We just missed the hook set. Got unlucky. That was another decent one too. Got him, got him. Good one. There we go. Taking drag, come on. I think I tightened it up a little bit too. Yep, that's a good one. Soft plastic jerk bait. This is sick. Four inch minnow, come on. All right, he's not huge. We're gonna flip him. We're gonna get that leverage. Oh, got it. Yes. I think this is like six or eight pound fluoro, so I definitely can't be flipping bigs, but he's not as big as anticipated. That was a cool fight. <laughs> Come on, baby. We're knocking out the baits. That was the two for one special, the hook and the bait out of the box. Yes. Oh, fish. <laughs> Wasn't even expecting that one. Oh, oh, that's a good one. I had to put that jig and Texas rig down, y'all, because I was just not getting hits. It's so surprising. But jerk baits today are crushing it. Load that rod up, swim this way. Come on up. There we go. We got them. Look at that, y'all. This is always a ton of fun. And I know the water temps are cooling down where y'all are at, so jerk baits is just one of the best options, and that's why MTB, they send you the right baits for the time of year. And of course, if you want to catch trout or panfish, they have other boxes too. This is just the bass box. This is the pro box, by the way. Y'all can actually grab one of these for as low as $10 with the link in the description. And I've never even fished these before, but they're absolutely tearing it up. So that is the beauty of MTB. You get different baits at your door every single month. It's literally like Christmas every single month, which is coming right up. So perfect time to grab one for yourself. Let me see if I can get some more though. This is insane. Ooh, got him, got him, got him. Keep him pinned. Okay. That was a nice hit. Let's whip them up here. Yes. <laughs> that was like, that was the next couple casts. How fun is this, man? Cruising through the city. It's not that difficult sometimes, y'all. Fishing can be so much fun. I used the Fish Brain app to even find this place, and I was sure that people had caught bass out of these ponds before I fished it, so I knew there was fish here. We're keeping things simple today. We might have to continue this on day two to get a hit on that jig and the Texas rig. So weird. Y'all, we are back out here fishing ponds for day number two with Mystery Tackle Box, and we actually secure the dub. We catch fish on all the baits we didn't on day one. It's funny how it just switched night and day. We're gonna take you now to the water, enjoy the rest of it. We get a good one on one of the baits. I'm not gonna tell you which one it is here. You're about to find out. Enjoy. There we go. It's a new day. All right. That's on the jig too. Wow, it's funny how much the bite can change up just in a day's work. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just let that jig sit over here in this corner and uh, he smoked it, man. So maybe the moving baits would work today as well. But the thing is we got to complete the slam and that is one for the jig. That means we got to throw this Texas rig and I think we've got this thing wrapped up. How crazy is that? The fish would absolutely not hit that on day one. And then to come out here day two, different pond by the way, but still, and just kind of grab us a fish in not that much time goes to show that usually those bottom baits are gonna get you bit but some days they just love the moving bite let's throw this little craw thing around what on earth did i get stuck on <sighs> broke off the texas rig so here's what i think i'm gonna do since i just snapped off the texas rig by getting snagged on a rock 
I think I'm gonna continue throwing the jig. They might like that skirt, that bulkier presentation, but I'm just gonna add the Weston ring craw as the trailer on the jig instead of this craw here. A Little bit different shape and style. This guy right here has got more ribs for water displacement. Looks like there's a good slot for a hook if you were doing things like Texas rigging like we did. Both should be great jig trailers as well. We're probably gonna have to break this guy down just a little bit. I'm gonna size them up and see how we can get them to fit on the jig just as well as this other craw. I'm just gonna pinch down a small amount here. That should be all we need. And there you have it, y'all. I'll tell you what, this plastic almost looks like it was made more for the jig than the uh, than that hypercrawl. All right, let's try not to lose this jig. Got him. Oh, there we go. Yes. Yes, that's the last bait out of the box. <laughs> no way. I just let that thing sit and simmer. Okay. Oh shoot. Well, we ain't done yet. I'm going to continue fishing this thing and try and get a few more. But look, the jig and craw combo completing it. Western ring craws. That was our first completed mystery tackle box slam in a long time. Maybe I'm not hyped enough. I haven't uh, I haven't gone for a slam in a while, y'all. But look, we knocked out the Guggen Squad Junior Scout first, a $9 bait. The lipless crankbait was actually like next. It's funny, we're almost going down this list. The Baiwa War Axe, that was actually that uh, original creature or craw bait we had on the jig a moment ago. The ring craws, the skipping jig, we still got it tied on, and we're gonna try and catch more fish. We'll see what happens. The jerk minnows and the hooks down there at the bottom is what we used on that soft as a soft plastic jerk bait and caught a lot of fish towards the end of yesterday's session as well. So there's like $40 worth of baits in this box. We're not done yet. We're gonna cast this jig around and see if we can get a few more fish to close it out. Maybe a big and maybe not. Uh, it's just fun getting a slam done and catching some numbers out here in the city. Let's make a few more casts on and see what happens. We got a little bit of time before sunset. It's a beautiful overcast day. It should be a great bite. Just like the other day, you're kind of wondering what changed and to be honest, sometimes you just don't know. You gotta find that pattern. Maybe they're on the, the bottom baits. Maybe they're on the moving baits. And you're not gonna know until you cast this stuff. These boxes are really not designed as much as YouTubers make it seem like to do a slam the day you get these things. I mean, that's a true challenge. This is tough. More likely, you're gonna be using these baits throughout the month. And this is a subscription service where you can get these things at your door every month. So it's like you just get stuff to use throughout the year with Mystery Tackle Box. And it's a great way to try new stuff out. Much like the soft plastic jerk baits in this box, I never used. These crawls, I've never used. This jig, I've never used. Used. And what's gonna happen is your new favorite confidence bait you're probably gonna discover from a mystery tackle box like we have many times in the past. I remember my first lipless crankbait came in a mystery tackle box and we were throwing that thing nonstop for the longest time. Just something you gotta try for yourself. Anyways, we're gonna stop ranting and try and start catching a couple more. There's some good brush here. I'm gonna toss that jig around in it and see if we can't get lucky again. There we go. Got us one. This is probably a little bigger. This is a big fish. He's been in the rod. That's on the jig out in the middle. Let's see what we got here. That's a good one, y'all. That will close out the day. Holy smokes. All right. Look at that. Nice chunky two and a half or so on the jig. Wow. See you, buddy. That was not bad at all. He was out there. Try that again. Wait a second. That thing felt so good. That was the muscle rod bent at a 180. I was thinking I might have had a four or a five on there for a moment. Fix that jig up. Let's try that again. Hold on a second. Could get a little crazy out here if that's the case. Might have found him. I know there's like a little creek channel out here and it gets like 12, uh, for sure 12 feet deep, maybe 18 feet deep. I can't remember. I brought the deeper sonar out to this pond like, like two years ago. And uh, there's some good depth here in the middle. Might just be a matter of time. I might have landed right on his head though. That might have been just a perfect cast. I'm trying to get out there as far as I can and just let this thing drop down. You can see I haven't closed the spool yet. Now it's stopped, so it's on the bottom. I'm just gonna go ahead and crank that. And I'm just working this thing ever so slowly today. A lot of the bites have been when it's just sitting, not even really getting bumped. And you can choose based on the bottom usually. If it's a little grassy, uh, I might not even be fishing a jig if it's like really grassy. But if, it, if you got a little grass, you can pop that jig around and you'll get a lot of catches. And this has kind of a mixture of like a sandy or harder bottom. There's definitely some rock over here. I was gonna hit it, but it looks like there's another fisherman that's joining me on the bank now, so I'm gonna let him have it. And I'm just gonna probably continue to, with that sandy bottom, you can just drag it along the bottom and you'll get hit. So that was after a couple pops right there, so I'm kind of misleading you almost, but you can drag the jig or you can simply uh, pop it along the bottom. And look at this thing do work. I mean, they are coming after it, y'all. They're out there. We're gonna get us a few, I think. This is, this is the slam right here. Check that jig out. Wow. Now that last one was a little closer to us. Definitely wasn't as deep. I think I got another one on. Oh my gosh, I was just getting hits. Not paying attention. 
But yeah, so I was popping it a little bit. And then of course you can also just drag it by simply raising that rod tip slowly. You're feeling out the bottom. Anytime you hit some nice cover, just get ready for a hit. What a day, y'all. That good one out deep on the jig. I, I was really thinking we were working with something special. Ended up being like a two and a half to three pounder, which you're not gonna shake a stick at. That is truly a fun city catch at the Urban Ponds. I think I just spooked the fish right here. Probably should continue throwing it. Anyways, once again, we wanna thank Mystery Tackle Box for sponsoring today's episode. If you want to grab your first box, check that link down in the description, get you some, go catch some bass, have a lot of fun, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.